Hey guys, uh, so I come to you with a quick tag today. This is the Bougie Booktuber tag. This was created by Olive over at a Book Olive, and I was tagged just yesterday by Alex of What Page Are You On? I will leave links to both of the, both of their videos. Uh, they both did wonderful renditions of the tag. Well, of course, El Olive's video is great, but Alex did a great rendition of the tag as well. Um, so anyway, I will just jump right into the questions. Uh, number one is, what is your average monthly budget for books? Uh, basically, however long my willpower holds out uh, is my budget for books. Uh, once I uh, have surrendered and my willpower is all shattered, uh, then it's kind of um, it's kind of up to uh, you know how uh, libidinous my desires are i suppose um number two uh what's the most you've ever spent in a bookstore i have spent about 105 dollars in a bookstore once um that was a severe outlier usually i spend no more than 30. uh number three is are you willing to pay full price for a new release or will you wait until you have a coupon or there's a sale uh, I don't buy that many new releases because I'm not a huge uh, reader of new releases, but usually if I'm going to read a new release, I just ask the library to um, to acquire it if it doesn't already have it. Um, number four, would you buy one new book or several less expensive used copies? I would definitely go for uh, several used copies. Um, you know, for me, it doesn't matter that much the condition of books. As long, if, if I can sort of tape them back together with packing tape and reinforce them, then I can deal with it if it's sort of, you know, battered and bruised. Uh, and if it's a book that I read and I really love and, you know, want a better copy of, I can always ask for uh, a good copy for Christmas or my birthday. And then I don't have to spend extra money on, a, you know, a nice hardcover or something. Um, number five, uh, what do you think is a reasonable price for a new hardback book, a paperback, or an ebook? Um, I'm not at all an authority on this sort of thing, so, I mean, take my opinion with a grain of salt, but I would like to live in a world where uh, hardbacks cost $15, uh, paperbacks cost $10, and ebooks cost between 2 and $5. And I have to just uh, agree with Olive in her video. She goes on a sort of miniature rant about how God awfully expensive ebooks are. Um, how absolutely ridiculous that is, because they're so cheap to put together. Um, they really should be the cheapest form of books to buy, and I feel like they're almost as expensive as hardcovers, which you know are actually expensive to make. Um, but anyway, ebooks. I mean, I, I honestly, it would be great if ebooks, uh, as Olive says in her video, were like ninety nine cents or something. But like two to five dollars seems more realistic because corporations are always going to be greedy. <laughs> uh, number six. Um, is a signed book worth more to you? Uh, how about a first edition? Um, I would, you know, first edition signed copies are things that I would see as cool. I would say that that's neat, uh, but I would never spend extra money to acquire one uh, over just a normal copy that was maybe cheaper. And they're certainly not things I would seek out. Um, so I guess that's no. <laughs> Number seven, uh, what is your most valuable book, uh, sentimental or actual value? Uh, my most uh, valuable book in terms of money is uh, this, uh, The Dramatic Works of Samuel Beckett, a selective bibliography of publications about his plays and their conceptual foundations. Um, by Charles A. Carpenter, and Charles Carpenter is actually my uh, maternal grandfather, who was a, a Beckett scholar, and this is just a gigantic uh, bibliography, it's nothing you would ever read, uh, it's just a series of references. Um, basically, if you're at all, basically the idea behind this is if you're an academic and you're at all interested in um, something regarding Samuel Beckett, you know, like here we have a section called uh, Beckett's Philosophy, Aesthetics, and Criticism, uh, and if you were interested in that, you would just go here and you would find a bunch of references of uh, works you could go to. Um, and this is, I looked it up online, this uh, is on sale on Amazon for about $330. Um, so, uh, but my most valuable, um, my most av valuable book in terms of uh, sentimental value is a, my copy of Crime and Punishment, which a friend of mine uh, gave to me the last time I saw him before he died. Um, number uh, sorry, number eight. Uh, will you pay more for a cover edition you like better? Uh, no. 
I uh, I don't I don't care that much how books look. That I mean, if a book is just lovely, I will relish it and adore the fact that it's beautiful. But I will not you know pay more for a more aesthetically pleasing book over one that's more utilitarian just because just f for the aesthetic value. If I'm always going to go with the cheaper book. Um, Number nine. What physical character characteristics does a good does a good quality book have? Uh, for me, you can probably see this coming. For me, basically, if the spine isn't splitting in half, it's it's fine for me. So that's the only really uh, good characteristic I need in a book. Uh, and number ten. If you won the lottery, what bookish things would you do with the money? Um, this is probably going to be a lot of people's answers, but I would start a bookstore. Uh, I, but specifically, I would start a, uh, used bookstore, a used, um, and possibly also, like, antiquarian bookstore with, like, lots of out-of-print books, and the bookstore would be located, uh, in the middle of nowhere in Montana, uh, and I would live there, and I would have chickens, uh, and they would, uh, and I would also sell eggs, um, I would have said Mo Wyoming, but there's already a really cool used bookstore in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming, uh, who has chickens, uh, who also sell eggs, and I would hate to compete with them, because the people who, who run that bookstore are lovely. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, and then there's a bonus question, uh, which is, uh, give us an image, actual or mental, of your dream home library. Well, uh, it's less of a, of a... A vision of the library and more a vision of uh, how I would be living in this lo in this library. So obviously it would be like you know wall to wall books, all sorted by genre, and uh, the nonfiction will be uh, sorted by subject and you know alphabetized perfectly. Um, you know, no matter how tedious it is, that is how my library will always be arranged. Uh, and uh, I would have this house out in the middle of the country, probably you know out in the middle of Montana, where the bookstore is. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I would live alone, and, uh, my brother, uh, would be mar happily married and have, like, two or three kids who, uh, you know, every year they would come to visit me, and they would be like, Oh, what is Uncle Lukash doing out in his weird house in the middle of Montana? Does he, like, run experiments out there? Does he, like, murder people? Is he a serial killer? And, uh, I'll have, like, an office in the upper part of the house that I'm always in, like, half the time while they're there, and they're always sort of trying to peek in and see what I'm doing in there. Um... And yeah, I'll just be the weird eccentric uncle uh, who lives out in the countryside, who uh, doesn't have any kids, isn't married at all, just ha owns a bookstore and does sketchy things in his house alone uh, with, you know, wall-to-wall -wall books. Um, so anyway, that that is the uh, bougie booktuber tag. I will tag some people uh, down in the description box if I can think of some ta to tag. Uh, but otherwise, uh, if, if I don't think of anyone to tag, then if you're watching, then consider yourself tagged. I know that's the you know, go-to cop-out answer, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, that is the, uh, bougie booktube tag. Uh, thank you for creating tag Olive, and thank you for tagging me, Alex, uh, and I will talk to you all later. Bye, guys.